So one of the concepts that you mentioned, which is the slow, uh, slow attacks and yeah. other things, is called information hiding. At the end of the day, I would say that every application, everything in your system should not divulge anything uh, about itself. It should not divulge, share anything because at the end of the day, it's not necessary for you to share, oh, you could do it this way, that way. There's too much trust in lots of people. Hey, good news. We're back with another episode of Armchair Architects Season 4 when we're talking about security. Today, we're going to talk specifically about API security. And there's lots of twists and turns that I think you're going to find really interesting. So let's get right to it with the architects. We have a topic that is short and sweet, and but I feel like if we don't talk about this, we're, we'll be remiss. I'd like to talk a little about API security, and I know that you all want to say like, yes, have some, and then I can say thank you very much for coming. This was a great, a great episode. But there's more to it, right? Like, like what 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 are you gonna think about when you're thinking about API security? Like, let's just rattle it off quickly because I think we can move through this super fast because it's it's pretty straightforward, right? So. I would say, David, first of all, I think we should talk about endpoint security, not just API security, because APIs are endpoints that sure. are either internally facing or internet facing. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, totally. And those are important differentiation because yeah. obviously the endpoint itself, the protocols need to be protected, meaning HTTP, TTP. Uh, so you use HTTPS instead of HTTP and so forth. I heard of so that. So you yeah. effectively make sure that the protocol that you use is secure. And then you look at the API as a semantic model on top of it, which you need to secure as well. Um, and that's two things. And from my perspective, security here has two dimensions. Uh, the first one is access security. Can I access, meaning call this API? We mm -hmm. talked about zero trust in a, our first session of this season. And we said, hey, the caller has to present an identity to an API and the API has to effectively look at that identity and saying, yes, uh, this I'm allowing access or not. And as part of this access is obviously authentication. And with this user token or service token, you effectively also get authorization, meaning what is this uh, user or application entitled to do in the other application? You have to think through both. Um, and that's really the basic of um, APIs. The other half, again, we talked about this, I think in season one of Armchair Architects, is a service has to protect itself, uh, meaning it can't um, suffer from uh, distributed uh, denial of service attacks where somebody is trying to call you, have the right authentication, but then they call you thousands of times uh, in a second and you might not be able to scale and therefore you have to protect yourself, which I personally think is also as part of API security, you should think through how you go and throttle and manage yourself so that load shedding can happen in case somebody behaves badly. They are right, they're, they're authorized, they can do it, but you need to tell them back off, don't call me 5 million times a second because I don't scale that way. So those two come together. And obviously there's many, many ways to implement this. The common way that people do this is they use an API management gateway, which have been built to do this. And there's many, many vendors, including Microsoft. So from my perspective, there are ways for you to implement this without you building it. But again, you need to design it, then pick what is the right strategy, um, and then use uh, a vendor or build yourself, depending on what's important. But those are the core concerns that you should think about um, as part of endpoint slash API security. Can I sneak something in, Eric? And then I want to see where, where you want to go with this. I yeah, just want to say it. that, like, I used to think, like, the thing we had to care a lot about was the really fast pounding on an API like and the throttling and that was like the big thing and then in the land of security when we started having slow password spraying and people doing slow discovery over time being able to detect that and shut that down super hard but perhaps even more important because now it's no longer brute force um at, at as fast as possible it can be a much more subtle or distributed attack than it is for like, you know, how about A, how about B, how about C, how about D, right? Like, and that that was the the old way, but I don't think that's nearly as, I mean, that's gets done still, but but so I think it's, that's why I think this is uh, non-trivial. But Eric, why do you, like, where where do you go when, when I say APA security? Yeah, well, you and uh, Uli took all my points, so maybe I'll pivot here and I will talk about 
some key considerations for each one okay. of them. So you, sure. uh, both of you identify like authentic authentication, authorization, data in flight, all those important elements of what an API act life cycle actually is from a call to completion. But there's some key considerations for each of them. So the ones I think about for authentication and authorization is like making sure you enforce secure authentication mechanisms ver to verify API consumers. You should know who's calling you. Uh, and if they are on the whitelist or the they're in the they're in the allowed list, uh, right. implementing strong RBAC and ABAC to restrict API access. So you may have had access, but you have access to certain methods, signatures, all the, that element of this of the API surface, and that's all you have access to. Um, utilize short-lived tokens instead of long-lived ones, so that you can't come back maybe like a month later and access the API based on authentication from like a previous month. Um, on the validation and injection side of things, um, you're going to want to make sure that the APIs are not uh, vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks, which we talked about last time, cross-site uh, SQL injection, command injection attacks. Um, validation of input uh, must be sanitized and validated before processing, especially when you're fronting an AI service as well. Um, because mm -hmm. you want to make sure there's not model stealing going on and all sorts of um, adversarial machine learning attacks happening. Um, and then absolutely log and reject all malformed API requests. That's more of a, um, a fabric function, an API gateway function. Some of these things are actually built into the API gateway. Uh, and then the other things I think about is the data in flight, like how should it be protected? Um, so API should always use encrypted communication. Um, sensitive data should never be exposed to API responses. And you have to implement tokenization and hashing for sensitive information. Like don't send credit card numbers untokenized or unhashed over API payloads. So those are the things that I think about. And again, lots of that stuff are typically included in your API gateways. Um, but you want to make sure that you have this running list of things just to check off as you evaluate which one of those you're going to select. Um, and uh, how you're actually going to instrument and include telemetry so that when things do happen, um, that it's people get notified uh, and you get notified. Okay, so I actually have an oh, ar architecture question here based on what you oh, just Before said. you go there, David, let me, oh, yes, let me throw one thing at you, which again, um, a lot of computer scientists should know this. And uh, if you're aspiring to be one, you should know this. So one of the concepts that you mentioned, which is the slow, uh, slow attacks and yeah. other things, is called information hiding. Um, at the end of the day, I would say that every application, everything in your system should not divulge anything uh, about itself. It should not divulge, share anything because at the end of the day, um, it's not, how do we say this, um, necessary for you to share all. Oh, you could do it this way, that way. There's too much trust in lots of people. So information hiding is a core principle that every developer, every designer should think about. Don't divulge anything that you don't have to divulge. Only share what needs to be shared. I mean, you get a request, respond to that request, but A, make sure it's a valid request, it's authenticated, and all these other things that Eric pointed out. But then don't answer anything that you shouldn't answer. Uh, don't be nice. Uh, applications should be nice. They should just say, I, I'm here, I will help you. That's it. Um, and then don't allow people to do stuff that you find is not right. Protect yourself uh, is really part of the story. Okay. So I, so here's my follow-up to, to Eric, which will probably take into account what Uli said. I was When you said RBAC, it occurred to me that an, an architectural concern that sometimes comes up with, with API design and security of API des design is the granularity of your roles or your RBAC or your authorizations. And, right, like just saying, cool, read, read for everything is probably not great, right? Um, and write, write for all, you know, you read or write, like, like that's not granular enough. But if it's like, can only write the word David, that's probably not also super great. So how do architects think from a, taking security into account about the granularity of their APIs to make sure you know, that it's like, uh, you know, uh, Goldilocks, you know, this one's, this one's not too big, this one's not too small sort of thing. 
Yeah, it's a it's a great question. I think I've used this analogy before. Goldilocks is a simple way to put the slider, right? At the one end, there's your you've got a role for every single operation that happens in that microservice or in that application, and you have a role associated with it, which is the extreme, right? right. Um, and then there's the other end, which is everybody can crud. They can read, create, read, update, delete. So you want to be somewhere in the middle, depending on what the scope, the requirements of the application actually are. Uh, that's going to be significantly, um, you know, prescient in terms of making sure that the application is actually usable. The second thing is you want to make sure that you really understand the um, the requirements and the the when I say requirements, I also mean regulatory requirements uh, associated with the application. If you were to have a data breach event, how much trouble would you be in? Um, and the answer to a lot of these questions and these considerations about where you've come out on the slider involves the secure development lifecycle, the secure by design principles, shifting left, um, implementing DevSecOps, all those things will help you find the sweet spot. And that sweet spot is not baked. Um, so as new threat uh, types come up, as new threat attacks and vectors est are established, you're gonna have to continually monitor where that slider is. You may have to send it more towards more roles, more granular controls because of these regulatory changes, because of these new types of attacks. Uh, or you might have to say, listen, the latency associated with the security layer of this API is costing us 30 milliseconds per operation, and that's untenable based on the volume we need. We're going to have to have a, a more coarse-grained RBAC model and still maintain compatibility with our regulatory requirements and our fiduciary responsibilities, depending on what vertical you're in. Yeah, I would add to this. I guess I'm only with the last response. With the last yeah, response. so what I would add to what Eric uh, correctly pointed out is there's another principle that we um, love as part of the secure by design is defense in depth. And you shouldn't just rely on API security, which is obviously an important element, but you should also make sure that the data is tokenized. Uh, Eric mentioned that already. So if you, you'd never send credit cards um, in the clear over even a secure protocol, you never do that. You never put passwords in the clear, even over a secure protocol. Um, you always encrypt them and stuff like that. And so from my perspective, think through defense in depth and saying, based upon that slider, if the API needs to be a little bit more open because of performance or other reasons, then you make sure that other elements take care of more stringent yeah. security for specific data elements and other things. Super cool. Okay, that's great, and I really appreciate that. So thank thank you both for for chewing on this problem with with us. Um, thank you all for watching this, and I hope people will join us for future episodes of Armchair Architects as part of the Azure Enablement Show. Nope, thank you. not that. We don't call it any of that anymore. <laughs> I'm going to thank you all again. Well, so with that, I think that's a great place. I think that's a great place to stop. I just want to thank you two for talking about this with me. And I want to thank you all for watching this. And I hope you'll all join us for another episode of Armchair Architects. See you soon.